All right, if you have your Bibles again, uh, Genesis chapter 6, uh, we're going to begin reading in verse 13. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 13, the Bible says, And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood, room shall thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. A window shalt thou make in the ark, and in a cubic shall thou finish it above, and the door of the ark and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life from under the heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and my wife and thy sons' wives with thee. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your goodness and watch care. Lord, we thank you uh, that we see deliverance in our own lives time and time again. We see your plan played out uh, in perfect harmony, Lord, and we thank you for that. God, we pray this evening that you would bless your word to the hearts of the hearers and make us leave here when we say it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. And we'd be faithful to give you the praise and the glory for it, for it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Now, uh, some fairly familiar verses of Scripture, and we're really going to be focusing on the fact that God always works by plan, by design, with specific instructions. Nothing haphazard, nothing thrown to the wind just to see where it might land, but exactly the way that God wants it, exactly when He wants it, and exactly how He wants it. If you can rely on this when times are getting rough, you'll know there's no reason to worry and no reason to stress. Now, if you will go with me very quickly back to uh, Genesis 6-6, six, six, uh, a little bit before our reading, and I, uh, I want to read uh, one thing there. Uh, uh, excuse me. Let me find the verse. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I did not write the verse down, but I will tell you what it says. It says, And uh, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And so I want you to see that the emphasis has always been grace. Verse 8. I'm sorry, verse 8. Uh, it used to be my, well, I guess it still is. And Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So uh, Noah wasn't seeking God. Noah wasn't looking for God, uh, but rather he found grace. And what, what is the means of deliverance today, just as it was then, is grace. Uh, if you remember, when Adam sinned and became a sinful creature, that who offered the sacrifice, who killed the animals for the skins uh, so they would be covered, and that was God. Uh, Adam didn't know how to kill an animal. Adam did not know how to repent of this. What little bit he did with the leaves wasn't God's plan. It wasn't good enough. There was no blood involved. And, and so we found then that he had to, uh, that God always makes the plan. And if we go by God's plan, everything will be fine. Now, um, uh, so once grace was disposed, uh, was uh, uh, applied to Noah's life, apparently they began to have conversations. This instance with uh, the revealing of God's plan uh, for the destruction of the earth, uh, only documented 
occurrence we had. But apparently there were others, and I'll show you that from the scriptures in a minute. But drop down to verse 13, and God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me. Now, uh, you can see in 2 Peter, and we may read there in a minute, that while the ark was preparing, and I think it took 120 years to build the ark, while the ark was preparing, Noah preached and said, destruction is coming. Yeah. Have you ever wondered why we get out there and preach and literally preach on the street corner and, and tell them of the certainty of the judgment of God and the means of escape, if you will, and no one listens? Well, all that time for 120 years, a very long ministry, even before it happened, he says the ones that will get on that ark are you, your wife, your sons, and their wives. That's right. Even before it ever happened. But it did not exempt Noah from preaching. You know, when we say that one day the Lord Jesus Christ is going to step out on the clouds of glory and say, it's enough, come up here. And we rejoice in that and we're glad in that and we give great praise for that. You wonder why people sit there uh, like fence posts and have no response. They don't get it. Yeah. And they never will. If God doesn't open their heart, that they will abide there still to the very last days of their life. And so even knowing God's plan, Noah kept preaching. And these are the, uh, excuse me, uh, verse uh, 14. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Now, I want you to see that God gives uh, Adam a very, excuse me, gives Noah a very specific way that this ark was to be designed. He gave him a very specific method of building. And people have argued with me on this, and they go ahead and argue with me again, but, uh, and I'll be fine with that. But you know, nowhere in this does it say that there was a bow in the ship. That's the point to end. I don't think there was one. I think it was very resembling of the Ark of the Covenant, which was a big box. Not seaworthy. Not something that in man's idea would even flow uh, across the Cumberland River, much, much less the greatest flood that ever came upon this earth. It literally surviving the judgment of God. And you know what? Going in a boat that's not seaworthy Go, uh, going by God's plan, that's what we're to do still today. You know, to most people out here, us saying we contribute nothing to our salvation, they think you're crazy. But that's God's plan. Mm -hmm. You know what? If I believed in works, I'd work myself to death. But that's not God's plan. It makes sense to mankind, doesn't it? But that's, that, that's not God's plan. And, and so we find then in the very same way that um, because he always works by purpose and design and he always has a reason behind everything that he does, he, he begins his specifications. Uh, verse 14, make thee an ark, which literally means a box, just like the Ark of the Covenant. Make thee an ark of gopher wood, and there is no gopher tree that I know of. Gopher wood, some have just suggested that it's a process. I have no idea. But whatever it was, that's what he used. And I believe if he would have uh, used red oak, it would have sunk like a rock. Mm -hmm. I believe if he had, uh, had the finest poplar trees, because I, I, the way I understand ships used to be built with uh, the lightest wood that they could find so that it would stay high out of the water. And really around here, poplar trees are very light. Sycamores are real light. If he had chosen something by his own design, it would have sunk like a rock. And if we as the Lord's people uh, began to conjure up our own ideas of redemption and our own ideas of salvation, what's going to happen? It's going to sink like a rock. Make thee an ark of gopher room, wood. Room shall thou make in the ark. Now, that really in man's ideas doesn't even make sense. What do you think the rooms were for? Some say, well, it's for the animals. Well, 
Every animal I've ever tended to, I didn't put them in a room in my house, did you? I put them out in the barn. I don't know if the rooms were living quarters for Noah. You know, the ark over in uh, close to Lexington, Kentucky, there were the rooms were for Noah and his wife. I don't know how they get that. Again, the Bible doesn't say, but I do know this. If it didn't have rooms in there, it wouldn't have been to God's specifications. And if they did not fix the rooms in there, again, I think it would have sunk like a rock. See, we don't need to get away from God's specifications. We don't need a children's program. We don't need, uh, we don't need worldly music. We don't need any of that stuff that's drawing crowds today. We need to go by God's specifications. And as long as we do that, we, not, we may not be packed out and you may not have the cartwheels in the aisle, but we'll be following the Word of God. And we see this was very effective in the lives of Noah. So there had to be some rooms in it. And, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And some people suggest it's probably some kind of tar or something. I don't know what it was. But what do you think would have happened if they only pitched the outside? Or what do you think it would happen if they only pitched the inside? Again, I believe it would have sunk. It would have never been buoyed up from the first fountain of the deep broken up. But rather it was set there and the water would have come in on them too. But they, but they very carefully followed the plan of God. And you know what else? They didn't add anything else to it either. They didn't say pitch it in within and without and leave it there, I mean, excuse me, and then add some of your own ideas to it. It didn't say to add a little limestone in it. It didn't say to do anything else. And you know what? Probably Noah being a wise man knew of things that would float. they had been putting his own ideas into it. Mm -hmm. And we never need to do that. Uh, uh, begging somebody to the front and going through uh, a little sinner's prayer. You know what that is? That's man's idea. And it will never, ever be effective. And so we find going by God's design is what must be done if we're to follow God's, um, God's plan. And this is the fashion or the, or the, uh, the uh, look or the specifications this is the fashion that thou shalt make it of the length of the ark shall be 300 cubits which is about 450 feet and, thou, and, and 300 cubits and the breadth or the width of it 50 cubits which is about uh, 75 feet and the height of it 30 cubits and that would be about 45 feet. And so I want you to see that this huge monstrosity was probably bigger than a football field. And 15 foot high ceilings in each deck. And then on, so you're having this thing bigger than three football fields to house these animals. Now, a lot of people begin, well, how'd they get this in there? How'd they get that in there? Well, you know what? That's not for me to be concerned about. I believe it. You know, that's where faith begins. You know, I do know this, and I always tell those, those naysayers about this. Well, the aquatic animals, the animals of the sea were never brought in to start with. He told them not to do that. And I do know this. If you put... Most species of animals, such as a bear, in a cold, dark place, they're going to go to sleep. It's called hibernation. And so probably the bulk majority of these animals went to sleep during their trip uh, uh, across the flood. But that's not my concern. Uh, my concern is that I have faith like Noah did and go exactly by the specifications. Right. Go exactly by what God's design is. And if you do that, my, my friend, you're going to be okay because you've not, you've not stepped out into your own idea. So he gives them the, the, the size of the ship and how it was to look. A window shall thou make in the ark. Now, I find this, uh, this very uh, interesting to me because I 
I do not like dark. I'm not afraid of the dark, I just don't like it. And all y'all been to my house, and you know we don't have curtains on any window in the place. We don't have mini blinds, we don't have nothing. And the reason why is I like to be able to uh, see out. Now, in my bright idea, if I didn't plan on listening to God's plan, I'd have had a bunch of windows in that thing because I'd like to be able to see out. But he says, I'm going to give you one little window, a cubic by a cubic, 18 inches by 18 inches, and that's all you're going to get. Now, I don't know how big Noah was, but I know this. This old boy couldn't get out 18 by 18 because I'm too fat. And, and, and you know, I don't think they could have either. Maybe, maybe some of the little skinny ones. So in addition to, uh, to not being able to see out, I personally think I felt trapped. Who shut the door? God shut the door. And so we, uh, it'd been real easy to get in the flesh and put a window in each room, wouldn't it? But you know what? Again, Going on your own ideas, on your own thoughts, the ship would have sank. And so we uh, we see again that God's ideas and man's ideas are often contrary the one to the other, and, and they they never really seem in line. Verse seventeen, the plan of judgment, and behold, I even I, the person of God do bring a flood of waters upon the earth. You know why there's floods today? Because God wants there to be floods today. You know why there's forest fires taking acres and acres out in California? Because God has spoken it thus. You know why here? And it seemed like we get huge rains. And then I went by a tobacco field today and it looked like the Sahara Desert out there. You know why it's sucking up and gone so quick? Only thing I can say is God wants it that way. Who am I to question? And, and, and so he, he, he says uh, very clearly, my plan is judgment. You know what? Uh, there's always a means of escape for God's people, but not for everyone else. There is judgment coming. And you know what? We, you know why people don't like judgment? It's not necessarily just the judgment, you deserve this, or this is your sentence. It's, it's the accountability that really makes them mad. Yeah. You did wrong, and you're going to pay for it. The accountability it is what upsets people today. Me and Sarah was talking about this on the way over here, and I thank God every day, and I mean that about my children. I tried to, I, I tried to teach them that work was necessary, especially my boys and my girls too. But I said, listen, uh, if you're going to have a family, you're going to have a wife and some youngins. You need to get out there and find you a job, and you stick to it. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, I know, and I've told this story before when Adam uh, decided he didn't want to be a nurse after all. I was fine to, I was fine with it, but I gave him two weeks to decide what he was going to do. You see, that accountability doesn't exist anymore, does it? But it certainly exists with God. And so we find then uh, the horrific judgment was, uh, was, was meted out by God and it came. It, it came exactly as he said it would. Now, go with me very quickly to the book of Exodus. Exodus 25. And we're just going to read a very, very small portion of the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, Exodus 25. And we're going to begin reading in verse 12. Exodus 25 and verse 12. And thou shalt cast four rings of gold about it, and put them in the four corners thereof, and two rings shall be on the one side of it, and two rings on the other side of it. Now, I want you to think about this as they're building the ark, and, and we'll see that the Lord God gets more and more and more detailed about how he wants the staves to look. That was the thing they carried it on. How the, and especially each little ring, what was it supposed to look like? What was it supposed to be like? What were they to do with it? 
And you know, that was just one little piece of all the majesty of the wilderness tabernacle and the, and, and the, and the box itself. All of that, one little thing, he goes verse after verse after verse. This is the way I want it. And you know why? It's because he's a God of order. He's a, he's a God of design. You know what? The God that's served by most people today is not a God of design, but rather a God that just reacts to things that we do. And nothing could be further from the truth. Our God is a God of design that's plans are so specific that amazes us. The, the very next breath that when you go outside, if the wind is still blowing, that was authored by God before time began. And that, that's amazing to me. That, that is more than I can fathom, but I know certainly that it's true. And so these tiny little rings that, that held the staves that they bore the ark upon, there was only four of them. Now, if you know what was in the box, there were two big stone tablets, and they had the Ten Commandments on them, and then they had a, a basket of, uh, of manna, and Aaron's rod that budded. And that was all that was in there. But, you know what? I bet them Ten Commandments was heavy, don't you? I mean, they had to be, and they were literally made out of stone. Finger of God wrote on them his, his, his defined law. That doesn't seem like much holding up a big, two big wedges of, of limestone, does it? What if they had put six in there instead of four? Instead of one in the corner, put one also in the middle. Give it more weight to bear. You know what would have happened? <laughs> in fact, it happened one time. God would have knocked that man dead. Remember when they were re when they were getting the ark back, it had fell in the hands of the enemy, and they were bringing it back to God's people. And there was a there was a man there, and he tried to steady it because they thought the ark was going over, and the man that touched it died. Mm -hmm. So you know why that was? It wasn't that God was an awful God; they violated His plan. And you know what? All this foolishness that goes on today, the, the history of Billy Graham and all the foolishness that goes with, uh, let me tell you how to find Jesus. You know what that is? That's nothing more than reaching out against God's plan. And, and, and it's destined for future destruction. Now, right now, it may seem like, whoo-hoo, look at them grow. But see, judgment's coming. Amen. Uh, judgment is a forward thing that will happen. And you know what? Uh, unless the, God, the Lord God opens their eyes, that will go on uh, to the very end. You, you remember a lot of people uh, put this on uh, other groups, but remember, uh, I think it's in uh, 2 Thessalonians, maybe, maybe Timothy, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Now, they're going to tell you about Jesus, but he ain't going to save you unless you let him. He's denying the power of God, is he not? Certainly he is. He, he, he don't know the God of the Bible. He don't trust the God of the Bible and certainly don't trust God's specific design for all things. They don't do it. They don't have enough faith, which is a God-given trait, Faith in the God of the Bible. Verse 13. And thou shalt make the stave of sheet of wood and overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put the staves into the rings by the side of the ark and that the ark may uh, be born with them. The staves shall be in the rings of the ark. They shall not be taken from it. Thou shalt put it into the ark of the testimony which I shall give thee. And thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, a cubic and a half the breadth thereof, and thou shalt make two cherubims of gold. Beaten work shall thou make them. Work shall uh, beaten work shall thou make them in the end and the two ends of the mercy seat. And we find the cherubims that that face one another and their wings come over and touch. And I want you to see. I said that I want you to do that out of beaten gold, sculpted gold. 
Now, they were very gifted people and they had just left Egypt. You know, one thing they knew how to do well was to melt metal down and make things out of it. So, uh, what do you think would be the easiest job to do? Is it easy to, easier to melt down something and make a cast for it and make the metal object out of that? Or is it easier to beat it and beat it and beat it until you get the shape thereof? It's much easier to cast it. But that wasn't God's plan. That wasn't God's plan. And so he said, I want you to beat it until it looks like an angel and keep beating it. And so we find sometimes God's plan doesn't make sense to us and no doubt there was much, much more work in debating something into that what looks like a cherubim than simply casting it and be easy on the flesh. We want to be easy on the flesh, don't we? We, we want to continue on the way, the way that, we, <laughs> that we've always done it. And they go on and on to describe how the ark is to look. Now, the last place I want to read for you tonight is in the Gospel of John. I love the Gospel of John. Uh, it depicts our Lord Jesus Christ as the very God that He is. And it shows, uh, it shows His deity. It shows that He is the God-man, just as powerful as God the Father and God the Holy Ghost, just as, just as mighty in every way. In uh, John 14, in the first verse, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Now what did we just read about the character of Jehovah? He made a means of escape by his design. Before Noah even started, he says, I want you to preach the whole time, but nobody's coming in but the ones I predestined to come in, but you preach anyway. And here we find Jesus saying, hey, you believe in God, you believe in God's character, believe also in me. One and the same. <laughs> that means it's all, not all going to work out, does it, Jerry? Remember that little work we did over at Dresden? At least in our eyes, we never saw nothing. We got one man mad at us the whole week. Right? And so, what was the purpose of that? Well, number one, we were filling the Great Commission, right? And the second thing is, we were doing it by God's design. And that's what's necessary. So he says, if you believe in Jehovah, if you believe in the Father, then also believe in me because we are one and the same. We have the same plan. We do the same things. We're the same. In my Father's house are many mansions. Uh, the new perversion say rooms, but personally I would prefer to have a mansion over a room. In my, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Now a lot of people say, well, he's been working on it 2,000 years. He may have been, I don't know. may have been finished before I was ever born. Because he said, I'm going to prepare a place. It, it, it may have been done centuries ago. I have no idea. But I know I have a place there. Again, by design. By purpose. Uh, you don't just start nailing nails together to build a building. You plan for it. You look at it. That's the God we serve. Yeah. And if I go and prepare a place for you... I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Right. Now, here is a glimpse, and listen, this is among our own ranks if you're not careful in the modern day, that they don't even believe in the catching away, but here in his own ministry, he says, I'm coming again. You know what? I believe the Lord Jesus Christ is coming. I believe at any moment he could step out. The fulfillment, you know the fulfillment that's waiting to be fulfilled is the last elect to be saved. And we're done. And you know what? Uh, it said this gospel will be preached to all nations. Can you imagine the technology that we have today they never dreamed of? One click and hear the glorious gospel of Christ in your native tongue. That's incredible to think about, is it not? 
That's miraculous. And so you know what that tells me? It's probably sooner than later. Don't you? And, and, and so we see then that even at that time, the Lord Jesus made them promises of a mansion to come, a time that he would return, and we're still to understand the perfect plan of God. He has not left us idle. And whither I go, you know. And the way singular, the way ye know. Now, the only way to heaven is the Lord Jesus Christ. If there had not been, you know, then this is the thing, what preceded, what preceded Noah to get him to work? He had an experience of grace, did he not? What will, what will preempt you believing that book? An experience of grace. Why do we preach and preach and preach? And seemingly nothing is the response. Because we're commanded to. You know why I keep going after uh, almost 30 years now? Because that's what I was commanded to do. Uh, you know, I think about my ministry 27 years in October. Uh, my man's observation has not been much, has it? But. I don't think I'll live long enough to preach 120 years. 120 years. Eight people. Eight individuals. Counting himself. And, and so we find then that that portion is not ours to worry about, but what we are to do is to be faithful to this book and keep preaching and cre keep preaching. So why are we to preach? <laughs> Jesus and Jesus only. Amen. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, how can we know the way? And Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. All singular. Christ is the way. Do I, do I love preaching on grace? You betcha. Do I love the, the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ church? Yes. Do I love to hear of the second coming of Christ? Absolutely. But, dear friend, if you're lost, the only thing I can point you to is Jesus. He's the way, the truth, the life. All singular. Everything that Christ says, you can depend on holy. Every, every truth that came out of his mouth, <laughs> remember, remember what he said to uh, Peter. Peter asked him, and say, Whom do ye say that I am? And he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Blessed are thou, Simon Berjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it to thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Yeah. See, uh, Peter's thinking was no help to him, was it? Now, I could preach, and I, I don't mind preaching on hell. Hell's a reality that we all have to think about and face. But what good it would be to, to, to preach on the bitterness of hell and ask one of these little ones, do you want to go there? And get them to say something. God help us. That's the day which we live, is it not? What I want to happen is God to reveal Himself to them. And then, then I know huh, that's done the right way. Right. You know, that's uh, paramount the last day. Uh, truths are been given, been given up. You, you follow the line of thought of and get somebody to repeat the prayer. That was not even heard of among Baptist people until about 1890. They detested that stuff. What happened? They wanted larger churches. They wanted more people. They didn't want their young people to fade away. So they talked about something that wasn't real. And you know what I found? 
those very same young people will fade away anyway. Huh? See, if it's not real, you're not going to stick with it. And, and so we find then that we, as the Lord's true church, we have been uh, empowered and made responsible for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I say unto uh, and he says, uh, Go ye into all the world, teach, preach, teach. And that's it. He doesn't say talk them into anything. He doesn't say uh, start a Sunday school class. He says, you go out there and you preach. And uh, let me have the dominion over the rest. You know what? It's very hard to do. Uh, it's very hard to do at the end of a service and say, okay, now I'm going to step back. But is that not all we can do? Would anything less be taking on the role of the Almighty? I believe it would, don't you? So the very best thing we can do is teach and preach and, and leave it at the feet of Jesus.